Okay, Emily? Oh, ready. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Maybe I'll just pop it here. Um, okay, I'm going to try to keep this pretty brief because all of you, um, except Tony, and, and she's involved in our um, committee meetings, right? The community club meeting, um, when I talked about the progress in the marketing plan. And so, you know where we're at with that. Um, we're looking towards that progress as promised meeting on October 16th to present some stuff to the community. And you know a lot about what went into it. A lot of it was um, inter local interviews, the online survey research with visitors and residents, um, a lot of competitive research. And one of the things that research really told us was how important our events are. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, all of that research and how important events are for small communities of our size. Um, we have lots of other communities of size have those. So with that in mind, we're really working on enhancing the 2011 event calendar. And um, I'm here tonight to talk to you about a specific event, but I just wanted to let you know kind of what we have in mind because there's going to be probably more of these discussions coming forth um, at a future meeting about events. So I just want to very quickly recap what we're thinking of when we're developing this calendar so you guys can kind of have that to, to reference and filter these things again. So first of all, we want to emphasize the brand of Lakeview. We talk about the blue and the stone and all of our great biking trails and those things. We always want to think about if we can leverage those assets when we're doing an event, um, our, our strength as a community. We also want to consider seasonality, slow times, um, or even during the summer, some of the things we could do better um, if we could make Labor Day weekend um, even a more a bigger draw for, for people to come to our community. But just think about seasonality and maybe bump up events during those what we would consider maybe an off season. Um, consider our target audiences. We talked about maybe needing some more things for families or even those niche audiences like um, you know, snowmobile uh, drivers and those sorts of things. We want to be resource conscious, time and money. Obviously, we don't want to implement a bunch of events that are going to cost us a lot of money or already, um, you know, put more burden on a lot of volunteers that are already maxed out. But we do, um, with that in mind, we want to get more people involved. We want to, as you heard me talk about in the um, community club meeting, we want to grow our volunteer base um, and just get more people <coughs> involved too that have unique perspectives. So, with that in mind, um, you heard me talk about again, just to kind of recap and, and put these in the back of your brain, but you heard me talk about a running event that we're thinking about um, doing, bringing back a fun run type event around the lake, um, a biking event. Um, again, these are things like biking. We talked a lot about how biking is important in our brain, and we want to emphasize that. And so we're actually working with Carol um, to, to get a ride together that leverages our trail and, and really showcases that system to people because it's an asset of our community. Um, that's what marketing is intended to do. Snowmobiling, motorcycling, holiday events, you, you heard me talk about all of that stuff. Um, so, but the specific event that I wanted to, to bring up tonight is actually a music event. Um, I didn't talk about this much in the community club meeting, um, but this is something that we've talked a lot about um, in the competitive research again. It really was something that stood out as a lot of smaller communities having um, and something that we really don't. Um, and so, what we're terming it, um, and we've discussed a few details today in the marketing me meeting, um, the Stone Pier Summer Concert Series. And the details we've discussed to date are um, having a handful of events, of these events during the summer season, which would obviously be down at the Stone Pier. And again, kind of as I mentioned, you know, these are part of our brand, they're part of our history. It's a really neat thing to emphasize in our community, aside from bringing in a musical act. Um, it's a really neat opportunity the marketing committee is excited about. The location, the idea, um, it also would obviously feature the lake. Um, we even envision, you know, boaters possibly pulling up, um, you know, recreating on the lake behind a stone pier. And, um, you know, our hope is um, we'd like to do it on Friday night. A lot of the research told us that part-time residents want to be more involved in some of the things we do. So we think obviously this could be a way to include them and hopefully even pull campers into town um, or closer to town. Um, right now, we're not thinking about a price of admission. We just talked about a free will donation, sort of a pass the hat type of event um, that we think people would probably donate to, to hear some of the, the music. Obviously, we'd look to satisfy a variety of ages and audiences. Um, and we really want to involve the high school um, jazz band and any sort of local connections we have. Um, and obviously, that would help in terms of um, you know, resources, like we hope we could, like leveraging some of the, the people that we know in town or, or connections we have could help us execute this at a, a pretty low cost. 
Um, we talked about having a legion as a backup plan because obviously weather is an issue. But it always is with an outdoor event. And we haven't really talked hours either, but I think that'll depend on you know what kind of acts we get to commit at what level and, and things like that. So. I think, again, we talked about this in the marketing committee at length, and this is a very specific idea that people got excited about. Um, and with, in mind, knowing that this meeting is coming up on the 16th with the, the larger community, we really would like to showcase some of these types of things to get them excited about the event calendar for 2011. But this is a specific item that we wanted to bring in front of council because I know there's many ordinances and, and things of that nature that, that you all would need to clear. So. I just, again, I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a frame of reference of what we're discussing now in terms of getting this 2000 event calendar blown out, but also just bring up this specific issue for discussion, I guess. I think we're tickled with anything. Sorry. The music sounds awesome. I mean, it really could be a low to no cost. Um, event, we, we could talk about how we want to do it in terms of what kind of acts we bring in. I think we'd like to do a one bigger feature act, but you know, sometimes also just, again, people don't always think, okay, Friday night, a lot of the things are closed on Main Street, um, you know, we already have people in town, but, but the truth is that an event like this will bring people to town, or at least into, closer to downtown, that aren't always there, they will drive down Main Street, they will appreciate other assets. Some people, I mean, I know a lot of people that have never sat on a bench or walked that sidewalk along the lake that has been poured and have thought about the trail that's being completed around the lake. Just little things like that, I think, to raise awareness and um, it can go a long way to, to doing other things. So, um, I guess I don't know, do we need... Just in this case in particular, <coughs> when we're talking about this, this summer concert series, so it was an issue uh, that the council really needed to you know, really be on board with to start with because it does involve waiving the noise ordinance really for it to happen. And there's some impacts on the neighbors as far as, you know, potentially a loud band down there on a, on a Friday night. But things are proposed to be more of an early evening type of a situation, so it's uh, not looking at something that's uh, a distraction to the neighbors late into the night. Yeah, it definitely needs to be over by dark lighting issues and probably in well Are you talking bands that can actually play music or just get really loud? <laughs> play music. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm still hearing some buzzing from the concert last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we'd like to get professionals, you know, seasoned professionals, but again, trying to involve locals too, like the, the high school jazz band or any anything like that where we can create those connections. In Carol you have the symphony. And the kids from here and San City and I mean we just were kind of randomly the other day just throwing out ideas of people we knew that had a family member or friends in the band, maybe local, may not be local, but the be interested in coming back and we tossed out, you know, several ideas without even really giving them much thought or talking to many people. So you know, that's why we really think we can, you know, do it and do it rather inexpensively because, you know, it doesn't have to be a five-piece band, you know, a guy on a guitar and it can be very entertaining and enjoyable on the lakefront, mm -hmm. so. <coughs> Sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah. Go for it. Do we have to pass it? To, if, you know, if we could have an, a, a motion that kind of approves of the concepts and, and mm -hmm. waive the noise ordinances as, as needed. Okay, I'll make that motion. For a second? I'll second. Roll call. <coughs> okay, roll Yes. Us? Yes. Lane? Yes. Trader? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.